on our journey towards a full-scale quantum computer, which is, which is our, our holy grail, uh, what we're finding is that some of the precursors and some of the breakthroughs that we're building, some of the technologies that are building, that are, that are necessary or essential to build a quantum computer, like uh, quantum actuators, quantum sensors, and quantum algorithms, have um, spin-off technologies. And what we've had is we've had those researchers come to us and talk to us about those, those breakthroughs and those spin-off technologies. And Doug and I have decided to invest in them formally. So is the hope ultimately to find companies not like BlackBerry, because we're talking slightly different when it comes to the technology, but companies that can grow the way BlackBerry did? Actually, it's, it's more in the sense that there is all this, uh, there's this buzz around the world that um, you know, this quantum information science is, is starting to bear fruit. There's a lot of talk, there's even an X Prize for a medical tricorder like we saw in Star Trek. You know, we've seen many of the of the devices and predictions of uh, of Star Trek come true, from the computer, you know, voice activation uh, and voice recognition to the communicator in today's smartphones and computers. But you know, the the medical tricorder that was used by Bones to diagnose and 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 uh, understand what was happening in the body non-intrusively, without actually drawing blood. That's something that you know we're kind of seeing that may be possible. Now, you're no longer the co-CEO at BlackBerry, but you are still active at the company. And maybe you can explain to us what it is the role that you have there right now is, especially given everything else that you're focusing on with quantum technology. Well, I'm still vice chair. I'm, I'm a board director. I'm a shareholder. Um, and I worked with the board, and I worked with a select group um, to, uh, to, to look at you know, far-reaching um, uh, you know, smartphone applications. I would imagine there has been buzz in Waterloo tied to the initial sales uh, of the new BlackBerry devices. I would love to get your initial reaction to how the phone has been selling in the markets where it's been available. I think there's lots in the press about that. I think the, there's a tremendous amount of pride in the region. Um, uh, for all that uh, RIM and BlackBerry has done and continues to do in the, in the, in the, in the, in the very proud launch of the BB10 uh, platform. Given the sales, the initial sales of the new devices, do you feel like BlackBerry is set up to, to be an independent company for years to come? Well, I have a, a great deal of confidence in, in the company and its management. And I think that, um, you know, I, again, I think that that is, that is something that we've worked hard on and, uh, and you know, BB10 has been uh, uh, critically uh, acclaimed in its, in its functionality and capability. And I think, you know, I mean, these are questions that you can ask uh, Thorsten. I think you have asked Thorsten. He's been fairly public about it. And Thorsten Hines was uh, made headlines this week for suggesting that perhaps the iPhone is a little bit outdated. But, you know, people are asking this question in general with the smartphone market if it's getting that much more difficult to make every new device that much more innovative. Do you think we're reaching a, a, a point where it's tough to introduce too much new innovation to smartphones as opposed to other areas of technology? I think we're coming up against what we, 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 I've talked about in the past, it's called Moore's Law has a limit. As we make these transistors smaller and smaller, we're approaching the size of an atom. We can't go any smaller than that. And we need something new. We need a new technology base, a new breakthrough to you know, build the next value creation cycle with the new breakthroughs, new products and services coming up. And we believe that that is very much a quantum-based um, foundation. Do you have a, an opportunity to have these kinds of conversations with some of the other leaders in technology? You know, we often talk about Apple versus BlackBerry. Is, is, do you have conversations with someone like Tim Cook at Apple about these same kinds of issues? Um, no, I've, I haven't had the pleasure to, to, to talk to Tim Cook. Um, and, and just as far as your own investments, obviously you've still got um, a lot of your in investment tied up in BlackBerry shares. Is that going to change longer term? Can you continue to do what you're focusing on now, uh, holding your, uh, uh, much of your investment in BlackBerry stock? Well, I mean, um, you know, that's personal, and uh, the, my personal investment strategy, investment strategy is something that uh, I'm not going to comment on today. I understand. Uh, just a final question on how the investments are going to roll out. What's the, what's the, t what's the timing, how long they're going to be made, and, and, and when you're going to start to sort of want to see a return on the investments that you're making? Well, obviously, we've already started. And you know, we have no, no real um, hard time frame. Uh, each deal will be independent and will stand on its own. 
Um, you know, it could be it could be five deals, it could be a couple dozen. It all really depends on on the on the deals themselves, the the technologies, the capabilities, and and the, and the opportunities.